Actually, it was my mother that uh, decided we were going to go to the March on Washington. Uh, she uh, attended uh, Spelman College, and uh, one of the uh, people who was most influential uh, in her college career was actually the, the president of uh, Morehouse College, a man named Benjamin Mays. And Benjamin Mays was scheduled to be a speaker of the March on Washington. So she didn't come to listen to Dr. King. She came because she wanted to hear uh, Benjamin Mays and some of the people that she knew from the Atlanta area did not know uh, uh, Dr. King, even though, as we found out later, um, he and my father were in a number of classes together. My father was a Morehouse uh, guy, but, you know, he, did, he just, you know, knew uh, the, uh, the son of Reverend uh, King was, uh, was also there. But the bottom line is that my mother really wanted to come to the march. Um, she thought it would be important for me. Uh, I really didn't have a sense of historical significance, but I knew to do what my mother told me. Once you got here and you yeah. saw thousands and thousands of people, yeah. what did you think? It was just an incredible scene. And I remember we um, not only did the march, but we came down close to um, the Tidal Basin. We were under some trees. As you look out from the Lincoln Memorial, we were on the right-hand side under some uh, trees that were near the Tidal Basin. And I had just never seen that many people in, in my life. And, uh, you know, I thought it was an extraordinary outpouring of people. But again, at, at 13, I just knew I was in the midst of something big, not sure exactly what it all meant. Could you hear everything? Could you hear the speech? Oh, absolutely. I, they had speakers under the trees and all that sort of stuff. So you could uh, hear uh, very clearly. Now, there were so many of them, I honestly can't remember because I've, I've heard the King speech so much, I don't remember whether I was actually, we were still there by the time uh, King uh, spoke. I do know that uh, we heard from you know a number of ministers. We were impressed. I believe I was there for uh, the last part, but I really don't have a distinct memory of that. What, what do you think you, you said at the time, you really weren't into the whole reason for the yeah. march, but since then, Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm uh, just uh, proud that, uh, you know, I was there. I uh, got to participate in the Million Man March as mayor of, of Baltimore. I was a, a spokesman uh, for um, urban uh, mayors at the Million Man March. So I, I told my kids, you know, my life has really been enriched by these two major experiences, having been in 1963 at the uh, March in Washington and then coming to the Million Man March. Very different uh, experiences, but really uh, enriching and uplifting uh, experiences, and, and I think historical. Do you think the March on Washington had an impact on your going into politics and becoming a public servant? Well, once again, um, it was more my mother's influence. She was a social worker, and she was always uh, talking about, you know, getting involved, you know, helping other people, being in, involved in uh, in policy in that way. And in fact, uh, one of her her sweet mates at the Department of uh, Social Services, actually, it was Department of Public Welfare at the time, but one of her sweet mates was uh, a woman named Barbara Mikulski, who went from being uh, a social worker uh, to uh, now a United States Senator. So they were very close. Um, and uh, Senator Mikulski, when she wants to give me the, the rib, will always talk about little Kurt Schmoke that she saw as a 13-year-old. <laughs> when we talked to Congressman Lewis, yeah. he, he talked about SNCC and the students who were there, yeah. who were in their teens and college yeah. students. Impressive. And he talked about how they were moving into being the new generation from a. Philip Randolph and Bayard Rustin right. and all those. Did, did you con do you consider yourself part of that new generation? Well, you know, I, I feel as though I my career was built on the shoulders of that uh, generation. There was there, there were probably other uh, people. I feel as though my career was uh, really affected by uh, both the generation of people who organized and those young people who were there at the march. I was really, in some respects, I was still on the shoulders of that uh, generation. I met a lot of those uh, people when I was in college. Uh, I was inspired uh, by them. And clearly, uh, you know, Congressman Lewis is somebody that, uh, you know, continues to be an inspiration. He was then, he still is now. 
for those of us who weren't there and saw it on television, yeah. about all we remember is Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Right, right. What else have we forgotten about that day? Well, I, I remember that there's so many uh, men and women, uh, different uh, ages, different socioeconomic groups. This is the first time that I recall uh, seeing, you know, whites and blacks and Hispanics all uh, together. A lot of older women uh, were there, uh, and they were kind of the glue holding a lot of this together, and I think that gets overlooked uh, uh, sometimes. Um, not too many women speakers uh, at, at that uh, event, mostly uh, men, but in the crowd, a lot of women, and the mix of the crowd is something that uh, really struck me at the time. Do you think uh, history has, has gotten anything right about the march? Or have we gotten things wrong about the march? Well, clearly, uh, most people remember one speech uh, that uh, defined uh, that, the march that day. I think uh, sometimes people uh, forget how effective it was in terms of legislation, that uh, uh, things did change dramatically. Uh, after the march. Uh, so many people were worried about the potential for violence. That didn't occur. Uh, it made a statement, a very strong statement to the country and, and to the world. Sometimes that aspect of it gets lost in just honoring uh, the great words that Dr. King spoke that day. So what's left to do 50 years later? Oh, and as far as civil rights is concerned, there are no final victories. I think that that's what people understand, you know, that we went from uh, issues dealing with uh, race to then gender equality, then the uh, disabilities, and then, of course, we, we've had um, uh, issues now with, uh, you know, uh, sexual orientation and, and these kinds of issues. Even immigration becomes a uh, civil rights issue. So the agenda uh, continues, it evolves, but I think we're a better country uh, because of what happened back in 1963. What about the cry for jobs and freedom? Has that been answered? Well, uh, again, uh, we, we constantly battle uh, for that. I think clearly we're better off than we were uh, 50 years ago. But, you know, as the education law about no child left behind, that's an acknowledgment that some people have been left behind and that uh, we together have to make sure that we bring everybody up. You glad you went? Oh yeah, it's one of those things I'm really proud of. And uh, you know, it's one of those things that pay attention to what your mother says. <laughs> so I was glad that uh, she encouraged me to uh, go over. It was one of the great inspiring events of my life.